Welcome to the Copper Canyon Town Council Candidate Forum. My name is Max Miller. I own the Cross Timbers Gazette. I'll be the moderator for this afternoon's Candidate Forum. As a local newspaper serving Southern Denton County for 40 years, the Cross Timbers Gazette is proud to provide this opportunity to the community to meet your town council candidates and hear their views on the issues. The Cross Timbers Gazette is mailed to 47,000 households and businesses each month. You can read all the latest Southern Denton County news online anytime at crosstimbersgazette.com. Also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. This nice little paper here, I appreciate you guys reading our paper. We are still a mom and pop and the only locally owned newspaper here in Southern Denton County, so thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to now welcome and introduce our town council candidates, and I'll start right here to my left. We have uh, Robin Davis with us. We have uh, in place four, running for place four, also Carla Hohenberger. In place two, we have uh, Jeff Magnum and Ted Stranzik. And running for mayor, we have Mayor Sue Tamel and Ron Robertson. Please give him a hand. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. And after the opening statements, I will ask the candidates questions submitted by you all. Questions will be asked in rotating order. Each candidate will have one minute to answer each question. We'll also allow for an optional one-minute rebuttal. Finally, there'll be two minutes for closing statements. Uh, Deb Schmitz is our timekeeper today, so thank you. And we will now begin our opening statements. And uh, we'll start right here with Robin Davis. Robin. That helps. Um, good afternoon. My when my husband and I moved here in 1989, Copper Canyon offered what we wanted. Quiet, privacy, wide open spaces, room to breathe. There were no taxes, no traffic, no police, no road crews. There were just good neighbors and a 20 minute trip to the grocery store. I, like many people, was busy with work and family. I thought things were just rolling along until I got a call from a neighbor informing me about the Toll Brothers High Density Development, asking me to come to a council meeting and investigate for myself. So I did, and boy was I surprised. Over the next several months, I attended and spoke at many council and joint planning and zoning committee and council meetings. And along with approximately 100 other residents, of which 97 to 99 percent were against this development, and I spoke against it. There were dozens of residents present, of whom approximately 97 percent disagreed with the changes. But the mayor and the council voted to bring high-density development anyway. Then and there, I realized that council members were elected to represent the citizens, and ours weren't. So I decided I would. The citizens needed their views represented, and I could do that. So here I am, ready to represent your wishes as citizens, as council member in place four. Thank you. Next, we have place four candidate, Carla Hohenberger. Hello. Um, I moved... To Copper Canyon in 2011 uh, when I married my husband Mac. Uh, we'd live on Landseer Drive. Um, after, I, I'm sure most of y'all are aware of, in 2016 we lost our house. At that time uh, this community came together. I mean uh, I even received some clothes so that I could go to work. So um, I would like to uh, have the opportunity to give back to the community uh, to the community and serve. Uh, I think that we all need to step up and do that. Uh, the meeting I came to, or the last couple of meetings I came to over the Toll Brother uh, development was disheartening to see the uh, residents so upset over the situation and the decisions that were made. I, I keep hearing the issue of uh, transparency uh, after looking at the information and understanding what has occurred, I don't think transparency is the issue. I think communication is the, the issue. The information is there on the website, but we are all so busy working, uh, taking care of our families. Uh, and so 
I think we need to work on ways to communicate that information out to the residents so that, you know, text messages, emails, uh, a newsletter, all of these things that could just get the information out before we get to a situation where decisions are being made that have made the residents so upset over uh, this project. So um, I'm here to serve. I have no agenda at all. I uh, just want to be part of the community and give back. Thank you. In place two, uh, Mr. Magrum. Hello, my name is Jeff Magum, and I'm running for re-election town council place two. I've had the privilege of serving as your council member since 1997 and as mayor pro tem since 2008. As a single council member, I've earned years of firsthand knowledge of our town's history and depth of experience working with a variety of issues. My wife and I moved to Copper Canyon in 1994 because of the rural atmosphere and the wonderful people who welcomed us to this community. I first became active in town government when I was appointed to Planning and Zoning Committee and later decided to run for a place on town council. In 1996, I joined the Argyle Fire District. I've achieved the rank of captain. I'm a certified firefighter in EMT, and I serve as vice president of the board of directors for the Argyle Fire District. My profession, I'm a principal mechanical engineer at Linux Industries, designing residential cooling equipment since 1986. I have a bachelor's and a master's of science in mechanical engineering, and I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Texas. As a council member, my top priorities have always been to fairly represent the residents of Copper Canyon being able to be available by phone or in person, to assist residents and newcomers in their dealings with town government, to work proactively to preserve and protect the, our town's green spaces and recreational resources by supporting the easement for hiking and equestrian trails, and by seeking all means of funding to maintain our roads while keeping our taxes low. I have a proven record, track record of being open, honest, reliable, and well-prepared of working hard to anticipate and meet the future needs of the town through a proactive planning and decision-making. I have a long-standing positive reputation, both past and present, working with all my fellow council members, mayors, and town staff. I look forward to continue to work hard on your behalf and to keep our town a great place to live. Thank you. In place uh, two, Mr. Stranzik. Good afternoon. It's good to see all of you here today. My name is Ted Stransick. I have... I'd like to take a little different approach. I'd like to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my business background and my social and my community services, both primarily in the state of Oklahoma, where I lived for 20 years and in the last 25 years here in Texas. I was born and raised on a farm, and I worked on that farm until I graduated from college. I then spent the next 50 years in aviation. I traveled the world. I have been a mechanic, I've been a pilot, and I've been a president of a major public corporation, all associated with aviation activities. My primary expertise is in business management, in program management, and people management. I built one of the largest corporations, or the largest corporation, as far as aviation services and maintenance and overhaul go in the Southwest, with the able assistance of a fine, a fine staff back almost 20 years ago. My community services are primarily in Oklahoma. I was chairman of the Governor's Aviation Task Force under two governors. I was also the chairman of, America, of Aerospace America and also a co-founder. It was an air show that was a very small air show. It was open to uh, celebrate the uh, uh, land run in Oklahoma. It grew from basically a small air show to one of natural, national prominence. We ended up winning two awards in the state for the best public uh, operation in the state and one uh, program that was uh, for national. We won the uh, air show that was the best air show for, in the United States. I am a businessman. I am not a politician. I don't look to consultants, lawyers, politicians, developers Thank you. for what to say or do. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Running for mayor, Sue Tamel. Go ahead. It is great to see so many of you come here to learn about your candidates. Um, it's been great to be your mayor for 14 years and to serve with so many fine people. It takes time and mutual respect to build a team on the council. Four of your six council persons have served for over a decade as volunteers. They are dedicated to your town, and the result has been rural, safe, Low tax copper candy that we all love. The 2004 master plan was revised several times, but it had two goals. The first goal, first and foremost, was to keep Copper Canyon rural. We have done it with large lots, and 42% of our acreage is ag exempt. That's incredible given the high density of Lantana and Highland Village on either side of us. We are virtually that's almost unheard of. We have our block captains and our deputies to thank for that. Our deputies drive every road in town once on their shift. And then for the rush hours, morning rush hours, afternoon, evening, they do traffic patrol. They answer your calls for service. And they are not here to make money for the town. They're here to keep you and your family safe. And they have done that. Three years ago, the Dallas Morning News recognized Copper Canyon as one of the ten, ten best communities in North Texas. We have done the Metroplex to live in, and they named us number six for safety in the nation. We're financially sound. We have the same low tax rate for seven years. We are rated by a standard of fours and a double A plus, which is huge for our small town. We have a small staff, only two full-time, two part-time members. And all the million dollars in funds that we have in the university. Thank you. And running for mayor, Ron Robertson. Hi, thank you very much. Um, my wife and I moved to uh, Copper Caddy just three years ago. Um, my Prior to that, I was in Bartonville, uh, which is not far away, where I served as the mayor of Bartonville for 12 years. Prior to that, I lived in uh, Coppell, where I served on the Coppell City Council for eight years. I have been part of governing uh, home rule cities and general law cities for 21 years. Um, my wife and I, despite articles and rumors, did not move to Copper Canyon uh, to run for mayor. It was not a, a job I was seeking. Um, I was sought out by a very large group of individuals uh, who live here that were tired of the way the managing body uh, and the CEO of this town was running the town. There has been a, a, a large opportunities that have been passed on for this town for, for funding. There has been a lot of, there's, you're getting ready to be challenged with a lot of growth uh, up and down the 407 corridor. There needs to be a solid plan in place to chat, to, uh, to deal with that growth. You're going to see commercial uh, on, on the outside fringes. We need, to, we need to have a good master plan that, even though amended, needs to be completely redone. And it needs to be a 2019 master plan. Um, I run and own and operate one of the largest pool swimming, swimming pool companies in the United States. We're top 50 in the United States. Uh, we have been for, 50, for 15 years. We have 140 employees. That gives me the management skills I need to manage and help manage this town. And I thank you for being here. We will now begin, <clears throat> excuse me, a question and answer format. Each candidate will have one minute to answer the question, and there's an optional one-minute rebuttal. So if you want to rebut, just kind of give me give me the signal. Uh, questions will be asked in rotating order, and what we're going to do is uh, we'll we'll do place. Since you guys are sitting next to me, we'll do place four, and then we'll do place two, and then we'll do the mayors. So we'll 
start with you guys, if that's okay. Um, and so I will ask a question, and we'll rotate the order. You know, I was looking at all my questions here because you guys gave me a lot of good questions. I mean, I've got three pages worth, and I do want to have dinner tonight, So um, unless we could order some pizza. But, you know, I think we ought to do, let's start off with this question here because I think this is probably a hot topic, uh, judging by what I'm hearing here. And we'll start off with Ms. Davis. What are the pros and cons of the Toll Brothers Vickery Park development on FM 407? You have one minute. Pros and cons. Thank you. I keep forgetting that. Um, you know, I think that Toll Brothers has experience developing properties, and they've developed many in this area. Some of them are actually pretty good. Um, in looking at what they have designed for the Vickery Park development, I am truly concerned about the lot size because it has been presented as one-third acre lots. So forget about the whole process of how we got here. That's another story. It has been presented as one-third an acre lots. But the problem is there are 154 lots that are less than one-fifth of an acre. Less than one-fifth of an acre. Okay, uh, Ms. Hohenberger. Um so I'm in agreement with you, the lot size, but I believe that was decided long before the last uh, 12 months. The lot size had been decided uh, as far as it being smaller. But um, am I just for the rebuttal, or is it? Okay. Uh, but traffic is a concern out on 407 uh, with the development being there. My other concern is that without proper planning, we're going to end up with the same thing on the north side of 407. So uh, believe me, I, I believe that we need a new master plan and address that. We need to have uh, some town hall meetings to get uh, input from the residents so that we're doing what majority of the residents want. We're not going to make everybody happy. Uh, but those are my two concerns, is that It'll carry on over into the north side of 407 and also the traffic. But um, Toll Brothers is one of the build, uh, better builders in the area. So that's my input. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, what is the, and we'll start with uh, Ms. Hohenberger, what's the most urgent problem facing Copper Canyon today, and what's the first step you would take to solve it if elected? The master plan. Uh, we need to, uh, again, develop a new master plan. needs to be uh, with the involved, planned out with the uh, council, and then also with planning uh, meetings with the residents. I think that if we have more input from the residents as the project goes along, then, you know, again, we can't make everybody happy, but it can be, and I don't like the word transparent, but at least it'll be more, there'll be involvement and buy-in on the project. Ms. Davis? So I think the most urgent problem is lack of citizen input. There is no process for dialogue, not just you talk at me and I decide what I want to do, but there's no process for a back and forth, a dialogue, a constructive method that citizens' input can be taken to the council and the, ca the council can actually consider it. I think that's our, our biggest issue. The other biggest issue is the fact that it seems like there are frequently times when deliberation between the council is gone into executive session and nobody has any idea what happens in there. And that is a method to circumvent open government. Thank you. So let's talk about transparency a little bit. Um, because there's a lot of talk about that in, in all forms of government. Uh, Ms. Davis, how will you specifically work to increase the level of communication and transparency between town hall and residents? So I think that 
using modern methods of communication is the way to go to be able to communicate information back and forth. So I think that if we had a newsletter that went out to citizens, and there are a lot of our citizens that don't utilize electronic communication. So I think a paper newsletter so that people know what's going on and what is coming down the pike is important so that all citizens are informed. I also think that there needs to be um, periodic, maybe quarterly um, town hall meetings where people can come and bring their issues to, before the town and have a discussion about it. So I think that that would be beneficial. Thank you. Ms. Hohenberger, same question. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I, I brought it up earlier about having a newsletter, uh, email and hard copy. I, I think majority of the residents do have uh, electronic devices. Uh, I know, unfortunately, I don't probably talk to my family as much as I, I would like to with the text messages. I mean, it's just a quick text message to remind you that we have a council meeting tonight, uh, remind you to go out and look at the financials that just got posted, uh, tell you that, that something's going on uh, specifically that you would want to be involved with. Uh, until, Robin mentioned earlier, uh, receiving a, a heads up to come to a meeting from a friend. Well, actually, the town should take that uh, and actually feed it out to the residents without having it to be word, uh, word of mouth. So, Thank you. Let's talk about taxes. It's always fun. We have to pay them, and uh, some of us, like uh, folks that live in Lantana, pay a lot of property tax. Their property tax rate is 95 cents per $100 of value. That doesn't count the school and the county. But wherever you live, you want to, you know, you'd like to pay less. So, Ms. Hohenberger, what would you do to lower property taxes in Copper Canyon? That's a sticky one. I mean, our taxes are high, uh, but if you look overall, the proportion to what we pay in school tax, uh, that's our biggest uh, emergency taxes that we pay. Mac, don't look at me like that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but the, I mean, we're getting ready for retirement. We do not want our taxes to increase. I mean, uh, it's going to take a, a community effort to help keep everything reined in. Our expenses, our legal expenses, our consultant expenses, all of that needs to be, you know, narrowed down or cut back to where long term uh, we don't have we can control uh, tax growth okay miss Davis same question so if you there are several areas in our town where we can decrease expenditures uh, one legal fees we spent in the last five months October 2018 through February 2019 $82,000 in legal fees, over $82,000. This is exorbitant. There are definitely ways that we can reduce that expense, and I think that we should. Um, if you look at our tax rate, among the comparable cities our size, we have the highest tax rate compared to Double Oak or Bartonville, either one. Um, when, when Mayor Sue took over as mayor in 2005, we had a 17 um, cent tax rate, and now we have a 29% tax, 29 cent tax rate in addition to our 10 cent emergency services district for 39 cents compared to 23 at Double Oak or 29 at Bartonville. Also, when it comes to roads, if we had asphalt new roads rather than concrete, it cut the price by almost 50%. Thank you. So, so one of the things that towns and cities do to lower their tax rate is to attract commercial development. So do you have any ideas of how you would go about attracting commercial and retail development to Copper Canyon, which there is pretty much hardly any at all? Right. There is hardly any. Um, we had an opportunity at one point in time to actually annex some commercial property um, into the city, which would have brought sales tax revenue. Um, and I think that that's, that would have been beneficial. We still probably have the opportunity to go back and relook at that, and I definitely think that we should do that. Um, 
as far as attracting new commercial development, I think it's going to come. I don't think it's going to come tomorrow. Um, I don't want us to become like Plano and be strip center, strip center city. I don't think that that's what we want to look at. But I do think some large um, combination retail business development would behoove our city and would bring in additional taxes. Thank you. Ms. Hohenberger? So the commercial growth, it really along 407, the north side is really our only area where we have that opportunity to have it naturally for the flow for commercial. But um, again, it's going to take input from all of the residents to decide if, if that's worth giving up and having that traffic. Uh, I mean, I, I think the north side of 407 needs to remain rural, but for the town to consider um, controlling taxes and, and getting that income from commercial, that's going to be a decision that we're going to have to vote on and discuss because there's, you know, a business center there would not be, uh, you know, bring as much traffic as retail, but again, it's probably not going to bring us as much tax uh, advantages. Thank you. So looking forward, Ms. Hohenberger, what's your vision for Copper Canyon in the next 10 years, and how would you get there? I would like Copper Canyon to remain the way it is today. Uh, it's When you come in, off, I used to live in Plano. Uh, the traffic, uh, you never got to see your neighbors because everyone just came in and drove into the garages and closed the garage, and then... You know, you have uh, very rarely have any uh, interaction with your neighbors there. So coming into the rural area here, I love coming home and uh, not having the traffic, uh, enjoying the fields, the trees, and, uh, and everything that comes with rural life. So to keep, keep it the way it is and work on lowering our expenses so we don't have to increase taxes would be where I'd like to be in 10 years. Ms. Davis? I agree as far as the rural aspect of our community. I think that that's what we all moved here for, and that's what we should keep. Um, this area is going to grow. Um, I don't like it any more than anybody else does. I think we need to be smart about how that happens, though, and attempt to manage <coughs> that growth to keep our rural atmosphere, to keep um, like to keep traffic down, to keep new people or mm. not new people, but to keep um, the tr people who don't live in town coming through our roads. Um, I'd like to see our cost structure decrease. Um, I think that that's going to be critical to the future. Thank you. Um, let's talk about public safety because it's on everybody's mind a lot. And um, a lot of people, uh, and I live in Lantana, and we argue about it all the time because we don't have our own police department, neither does Copper Canyon. So do you think that your current arrangement with the uh, Denton County Sheriff's Office is sufficient for public safety in Copper Canyon? Our arrangement with the Denton County Sheriff, I think, needs to be renegotiated. Um, in the three months, December, January, and February, there were 67 calls. Those calls cost approximately $1,170 a call. That's a lot of money per call. So I think that we need to really relook at this, relook at what we need in terms of police force, and look at what it costs. And I think we need to go out and renegotiate what we have, maybe look to some other sources for public safety. Thank you. Ms. Hohenberger? Um, I believe that we should renegotiate the uh, agreement we currently have with Denton County Sheriff, but they are the ones that currently support Lantana. And they are here in the area, and they do do a great job. I mean, I haven't got stopped by him yet, but I do see him pull over a number of cars. Uh, and they, he does 
uh, continue to keep the traffic at a safe pace. And believe me, uh, folks coming over from Lantana, going over to 2499, uh, uh, they, I think probably most of them uh, don't consider Copper Canyon a friendly uh, community because they are getting pulled over. So um, the other thing is that uh, it's, it, it's a safe community. I, th I think they're doing a great job. We've, I've not... We've not had any issues with uh, security or anything like that. The biggest thing issue I have is the bicyclers. No offense, but uh, four deep on uh, Copper Canyon, uh, and your everybody comes to a standstill. So, sorry, I forgot to turn my mic on. I think they did a great job. Give my hand. We will now move on to place two. Uh, we have Jeff Magnum and Ted Stranzik. And uh, Jeff, we'll start with you. And I'm going to ask you, what does Copper Canyon do well? I think Copper Canyon, what we do well is we've been able to protect ourselves from the impact outside of the area, such as Lantana, Denton County. I think we've kept our rural atmosphere. We have good ordinances. We have good people. I think we also, Copper Canyon, as far as a community, we did well when we acted and passed the 2009 road fund and the bond to repair a majority of our roads, and we got that at a great cost, and we worked well as a team with block captains on each, on every street and town that revised, that came up with the plan and did that. I think Copper Canyon also helps out the people when they need it. Uh, you take, for instance, Mac and, and Carla when their house burnt down. They got a lot of help from all their neighbors. I think also you look at the care we do with the equestrian trails and all the people that help out on that. And also the, uh, the adopt-a-spot. So I think Copper Canyon residents step up and do a great job. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stranzik, same question, sir. I think the best benefit in Copper Canyon is the people. They take care of each other, they help each other, and that's what we do better than anything else. Uh, when it comes to communication, I think between the neighbors, they, some of them like to be left alone, some of them want to know what's going on. There is a good communication on part of this, and I think the other part of it needs to be improved. As far as our infrastructure, Right now, we have a good infrastructure, and I think that needs to be maintained. As far as the safety goes, I think we have reasonable safety, but at a cost that is simply uh, just too high. Uh, overall, I think it's a community spirit, and that's what we do best. Thank you. Mr. Stransky, I'll start with you for this next question. Some say it's time for the town's master plan to be overhauled. What do you think? I think it needs to be overhauled in its entirety. It's not been modified in 15 years. There have been certain amendments made relative to the town center, but overall, you attend meetings, and every meeting there is an amendment of some kind to the master plan. Uh, in my opinion, it resembles roadkill. It's been stepped on, mutilated, and changed so much it needs to be modernized. It needs to be updated and relevant to today's standards, not standards that were 15 years ago. Thank you. Mr. Mangum? I do think that the master plan needs to be updated. The last time we updated it in 2004, we have made minor revisions to that, mainly around the town center area, uh, updating that with different options that have come around. But the last, it's been... 15 years since we've updated, I do think we do, do, do need to do a complete rewrite of that and do the same process we did before. When we hired somebody that, that actually is a planner come in and we hold public meetings and we, get, we do the surveys and go out and use their experience and rewrite the whole thing, spend that time, spend the money if we need to, it's time. Actually, at the last meeting, in the council meeting, it was brought up about future agenda items, and that was brought up as one of the items that we need to be doing in the future as a update to the master plan. So I totally agree with it. It's, it's time that we need to do that. Thank you. Next question, we will talk about uh, budgets and taxes. 
Mr. Mangum, uh, what should be done to diversify the town's tax base? Rever to diversify the town tax base outside of the 407 quarter, all you have is property taxes and you have home occupation. We do collect some sales tax from that. Looking at, and when we came up with the 2004 master plan to diversify our tax base, looking at the 407 corridor to be able to correct commercial and retail into that area. So I do think we need to continue to explore options and have options available. I do think updating the master plan to have that. And it may take some, actually, some marketing to get our name out and looking so that builders and developers, because I do, I do think that what we do want is not strip centers in there, but we do want, if we do any type of commercial retail, have quality commercial that actually can attract clients, contract, and try, attract businesses that would be able to truly be a benefit to the town because we don't want to base everything. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Stransick, same question. Well, I think w when, we, when we look at the tax base in itself, um, you're, you're going to have to control expenses to prevent it from <coughs> being increased. Right now, we give concessions to builders. We are not really marketing our commercial base. Uh, we have got a great location here for both rural living and commercial opportunities, and I don't think they have been uh, been really promoted the way they need to be. Uh, as far as expense control goes, we spend money in areas that are simply, I think, we need to reevaluate our engineering costs, our, our consultant costs. Uh, we have a municipal court that uh, right now uh, needs to be moved. Uh, it brings in a, an, a, a criminal element that I don't think is necessary, and all of a sudden we've got to come up with bulletproof glass and, and shooter training. Wait a minute. We need to look at our expenses and control those first. Thank you. Mr. Stransick, uh, what is the most urgent problem facing Copper Canyon, and what's the first step you would take to solve it if elected? The, first, the most urgent problem is communications. Um, People say that we are transparent. I've been attending almost every meeting for the past year, and I can say that transparency is not what you think it is or what has been published in the newspapers. We need to have a better dialogue, an open dialogue, between the residents and the town council. At this point in time, that is not occurring. It's all one way, and we need that first so we can have good communications and in turn, use the input from the residents. Marry that with the talent that we have on the town council to do a better job in governing this whole community. That is not occurring, and it needs to occur. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Magnum. I think the most urgent need that Copper Canyon has is based off of the experience we've seen on the 407 quarters, we do need to update our master plan. We do need to get all of the citizens' input, all of the citizen surveys back in and have some town hall meetings so we can go over what their views are and how we want to progress forward in this town. Everybody has a response. Everybody, we want to get their inputs. Everybody has a responsibility to respond because it's, it's, this is everybody's town. We want to act that way and we want to bring that in. Uh, we can always look to I pursue future avenues of communication to try to get the word out. And if we do want to have quarterly, yearly town hall meetings where we do just get citizens' input, um, that's a good good option. I've always made myself available anytime a resident wants to call or talk, and I will want to continue that as well. So I think that's a good option. But I do think our master plan is probably the most urgent need. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit more about transparency. It's come up a few times uh, this afternoon. Some say the town has a transparency problem or possibly even a conflict of interest problem. What do you think, and how would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? My yeah, question. Yeah, Mr. Magnum. As far as transparency, if you look at the way the, we follow the Open Meetings Act, so any business that is conducted has to be conducted in open session. All of that dialogue is done in open session. 
I think transparency-wise, everything's published. We're publishing everything out in advance required. When we go into an executive session, executive session is only done for when we're trying to seek legal opinion. No business can be ducted in there, conducted in there. All you can get is opinion. You come out, any decision is made, has to be made in public. I have no problem making sure all of the agenda items and all the background information is available on the website and or print. Actually, a website's better printed. We don't have a big enough bulletin board to be able to do that. Transparency-wise, I think that we have all of our budgets out there, and we're always open for questions. If you see an agenda item, you could always call up and talk, and I always want to make myself available for the citizens of Copper Canyon to be able to do that. Thank you. Mr. Stransick? When we look at how we handle our public meetings, the agenda is published at Friday at 4.30. At 7 p.m. on Monday, we have to, at that time, discuss what, whatever is on the agenda. There is little or no time to really analyze what has to happen. You talk to other, our neighboring towns, they don't have joint sessions. The fact of the matter is they, pro, they almost prohibit them because it doesn't reflect transparency. It doesn't promote transparency. They, they allow one week between a P&Z meeting and a town council meeting. We, every single time in the meetings that I've attended, everybody goes into an executive session. What's the big deal about legal issues? You never know what happens in those executive sessions, but when they come out, it's slam bam, thank you, ma'am, and the, and the particular issue was approved. Thank you. We'll touch on public safety. Um, Mr. Stranzik, should Copper Canyon form its own police department? I think the economics on that need to be explored. Our neighboring cities have police departments, and um, I, I think more has to be done and possibly even in a cooperative manner with some of our neighboring cities instead of just having a lone police department. Uh, we obviously need uh, public safety. I think our expenses right now are too high, and that needs to be explored and examined. Um, other ways that we can do this, I think, is possibly in a, in a volunteer standpoint as well as partnership with uh, one of our neighbors. Thank you. Mr. Magnum? We've had police here for a long time, and the main reason we had police is for the safety of our roads and safety of our citizens. We, and it's time. We've been with Denton County Sheriff's for a while to go out for a bid to look at other communities. In the past, what is in all of that research, it has found out that working with the county has been the best option, been the lowest option for that. We have also done the cooperative police department in the pack. We actually worked with, we actually contracted with Double Oak and had them for at least two to three years on a police force there until their rates came way up, uh, came up higher than what we could even get with the Denton County Constable's Office. And so then you also get an idea of, okay, you don't have a dedicated deputy over here, so you're looking at when they're going to be able to respond and not respond. We've also looked at in the past that at a certain point in time, if expenses get too high, it may be worth forming a police department. And we've done that by evaluations with the public safety committee that looked at all of that in advance. And that's where we decided we continue to contract at this point. Thank you. Final question. What is your vision for Copper Canyon in the next 10 years, and how would you get there? Mr. Magnet. My vision for Copper Canyon in the next 10 years and how we're going to get there. We see growth on 407. There's going to be retail growth and there's going to be also there is residential growth. I think how we get there and how we expand that is we go in, we look at the master plan, we update the master plan, we get the input from the citizens, and we use planners that actually is looking at current conditions that we have today versus what the conditions were in 2004. I think we also need to look at our ordinances and restructure our ordinances because we our zoning ordinances and our subdivision ordinances were written back in that particular time frame, and conditions have changed. Standards have changed. We've got updated building inspections or building um, 
ordinance says, but we do need to look at that. So I think that's the best way in the in the future is to look to where that major growth is gonna is gonna happen or possibly happen and be prepared for that. Thank you. Mr. Francic, same question. I think we need to start with a controlled growth and community development planning. We haven't had that. We've had harem scarum development, we've had high density development, we've had a lot of emotion expended in those areas, and what do we really have? There's been comments made about, well, you know, we're going to get a lot of tax benefit from that, but when you ask the council, what have you done to audit and verify all of these financial numbers, nothing has been audited. We really don't know what the true financial benefits are. The growth of this community is based on its rural lifestyle. That's my vision for this community. <coughs> not high density, not uh, the type of zoning right now that is occurring gives out too many concessions to developers. It compromises our fees. That has to stop. We need to focus on good, solid residential development. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's give them a hand. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk to uh, our mayoral candidates. And again, we'll do the one-minute uh, Q&A, and we do have a one-minute optional rebuttal, so just let me know if you'd like to do that. And uh, we'll start off with uh, Ms. Tamel. Ms. Tamel, it takes thick skin to sit on town council and be the mayor. Tell us how you would handle negative feedback or criticism from your constituents. Now it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. All right. Listen to people who have a different opinion from you because that's part of the beauty of Copper Canyon. We don't all think alike. We have different feelings about different things. Certainly Toll Brothers brought that to the forefront more than anything else. The people who were happy to have a quality developer down there and a builder who stood behind their homes. We were looking at possibly having one developer and having six, seven builders that we'd have to check on their background to be sure they were good and reliable builders. So listening to everybody, like today, is very important. And people do call me and the other council members. They don't want to be out in public giving their opinion, but they definitely feel free to call us on the council. Thank you. Mr. Robertson, same question. You know, as a council member or, or a mayor, you live in a glass bowl. You're, you're, virtually, a, you're virtually a volunteer that 50% uh, of the people is going to agree with you and 50% is not going to agree with you. Uh, anyone that serves as a council member or a mayor, whether you agree or disagree with them, I respect because it is a volunteer position and you're going to be criticized for it. I have thick skin. I have been criticized for being mayor. I have people in this... And this room is still criticizing me. But, you know, it's, it's, we're all here for the better of Copper Canyon's future. And you just have to, you know, look at everybody and agree to disagree with them and move on to the next agenda item or the next, the next problem that will face us. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of problems, um, got several questions that were sent to us about flooding. And to be honest with you, I had no idea there was a problem with that, but there apparently is. And so my question is, starting with Mr. Robertson, how would you address residential flooding and drainage issues in Copper Canyon neighborhoods? Flooding starts upstream. Um, you know, Lantana actually sends a lot of the water downstream right through Point Dexter Creek, uh, which I live on. Um, it starts with proper planning. If you bring a subdivision in and you look at the subdivision, one of the first questions you need to ask is, what's downstream flow going to be? Where's, where is the water going to go? Are you going to have retention ponds or... How is it going to get to Poindexter? How is it going to get to Lake Louisville? Last year, they spent $18,000 in the budget for the MS4 drainage plan. I met with a gentleman just the other day that was right here on Chin Chapel and showed me a drainage project that they did at his home, which was actually a joke. 
I watched a drainage project the other day at its states and Chin Chapel go on forever. And when you go to look at it today, it hasn't improved. It's still a problem. So I don't think enough time and man, uh, time and, and effort has been put into it. And I really don't think the engineers that we have are qualified to, to deal with this. Thank you. Ms. Tamel, same question. Drainage is one of the things we seriously addressed when we rebuilt all our 25 to 35-year-old asphalt roads. Uh, we were so happy with the drainage at that time. We drove all over town and everything seemed to be draining fine. We have a few houses, one house at floods. There are no other houses at flood. That house was built before the town was even incorporated and it was built in the floodplain. We cannot alter the floodplain. The federal government does that. We have TCEQ coming to look at our latest subdivision this week and they had been given a citation to get everything, their retention ponds, their sodding, their grass, their drainage, all in order by this coming week. And they are doing so right now. Drainage is only a problem for a very few people in town. So it's hard to put a drainage tax or fee on everybody when it only affects a very few people. Thank you. Okay, Mayor uh, Sue, we'll start with you on this one. What do you consider your strongest leadership skill, and how would it benefit the town? Well, in the past, it's been recruiting volunteers, whether it's adopt a spot for the roads, whether it's a block captain, whether it's trying to get somebody qualified to run for council, or somebody who would bring in a different view viewpoint to run for council. Uh, it's been a pleasure to deal with our council members in the past. They have been outstanding, and they are dedicated to the town. They care what the town is going to do in the future, and they devote their time to it. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, same question. You know, I believe it's uh, building consensus, first of all, with your council. I think it's building bridges between your council and the city and, and, your, um, and the citizens. I believe it's allowing your managers, as, as a business person, I allow. I have several managers, and I allow them to do their job. Um, I think you need to let your managers and your staff do their job and not interfere with them uh, to be a, a good leader. Uh, you have to be able to take criticism, like I said earlier. But uh, And that's basically it. Just build consensus and build bridges. Thank you. Well, let's talk about Toll Brothers because it's the elephant in the room in some cases. Um, Mr. Robertson, tell us what you think about the pros and the cons of the Vickery Park development on FM 407. Well, I think we determined that Toll Brothers was probably the best option for there as a builder, and I would agree with that. You know, I think the, the pro, um, if it was going to happen with a higher density, it happened on the south side of 407. It doesn't really impact. They had sewer, so that should have been allowed. And I would have, so I have disagreed with people in the, uh, over this. I think the council really did a good job in transparent, in transparency in getting to where they got to. They finally got to a point where they approved 195 lots and everybody agreed to that. And it was rightfully so. However, shortly thereafter, the mayor went behind the council's back, sent out a letter to Toll Brothers and told them how they could get 225 lots, added 27 lots to that. After the council had made a decision and voted on 198 lots, and that was the con in the whole thing. Thank you. Sue? Well, that's not actually what happened. Toll Brothers came back to us with the 198 and said they were walking, that they could not make it financially work with 198 lots. And I looked at their plan, and they could make the western third the minimum third-acre net lot that we had talked about, 100 feet wide by 145 feet deep. What they could do, that would take but down maybe 15 lots. What they could do with the other side, I had no clue, because that was such a high density. It would mean changing the streets, uh, changing their ponds, changing their green space, everything. So the 225 came about with only the western side. And Toll Brothers had called our town manager 
and she told them that that was a suggestion simply for the western side to get it down 15 lots. Rebuttal. Yes, sir. I have right a letter ahead. here. The mayor sent to the city, city administrator asking her to send a letter to the Toll Brothers to tell them how to get to the 225 lots. She said the administrator would not do this. She said she would forward the message to Toll Brothers because it was inappropriate. The council had already voted. This should have went back to council for them to make another decision if they chose to. It's not for the mayor of the town to take a set of plans and get with their consultant at her house on Orchid Hill and redesign the subdivision. That's just not the way it's done. Council made their decision. It should have stayed, and that should have been where it, was, where it should be today. Thank you. Uh, do I get a rebuttal? Rebuttal to a rebuttal? No. Okay. Because we could go on all day. And we, we're having fun, but we don't want to go on all day. You can take some of your time for the next question if you want. You can use the 60 seconds however you want to. Um, my next question is, and who am I starting with? I'm starting with Ron. I'm starting with Ron, right? Sure. Is that? Start start with Ms. Tamel. Thank you. Okay. If you received a $1 million grant to use for the town any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? I would love to take um, some of our open acreage and make it a park, a real natural park that would never be developed, even with our one acre minimums. Uh, I don't know that will ever happen. I don't foresee that, but it's a nice idea. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Robertson. I would take the performa that was uh, Mr. Hill worked on and did a very fine job of it, too, uh, and it relates to the road system. When you look at the performa, the way it's stretched out, we're only spending fifty or $60,000 a year for road maintenance and infrastructure repair. As you go out, it go, every year it goes up 10 20% because of material and labor cost increases. I would reach way out there, and I'd bring a lot of those projects forward and go ahead and get the infrastructure taken care of and get it in place. Thank you. We'll start with you, Mr. Robertson. Uh, the next question is, how do you plan to better involve residents in the decision-making processes in Copper Canyon? Well, this goes back to open meetings and open, uh, you know, town hall meetings. I, I, I'm a fan of those as well. Uh, I, I've had a few of them. Uh, we did it when we did a gas and oil um, um, ordinance. We did them when we did some contract annexation in, in, in Bartonville in the past. I stood up in a podium and just took questions for hours, a couple hours at a time. Uh, I don't, I can count on two hands how many times I went into executive session uh, to discuss something. Um, you know, I just think it's just good open government and continually, you know, build build that bridge between council and between the citizens. Thank you. Same question, Ms. Tamel. I'm sorry. What was the question? That would be, how do you plan to better involve residents in the decision-making processes in Copper Canyon? What we've talked about in the council uh, previously in our workshops, we try and have a workshop every January if we can. And the last time we did a master plan, we sent out a survey and got it back, and we had many open meetings with people coming in and giving their suggestions. I think that would be a good time to do it now as we revise the master plan. We now know what Toad Brothers Project looks like, so that gives us a chance to use that. It's a great stimulant for the north side of 407, and we are already seeing people very interested in commercial over on that north side. Thank you. So down in Austin, they're uh, talking about tax appraisal caps and all kinds of fun things like that. Are you concerned about the state limiting city's revenue, and how would you propose making up for a shortfall if necessary, Ms. Tamel? Well, a town like Copper Canyon that has kept the same tax rate for seven years is especially penalized by a limit on what you can raise your taxes on. Previously, you could maybe go up 8% if you wanted to without the cost of a citywide election. Now, if you go to 2.5%, that's just minuscule if you have any reason why you need an increase in taxes. Right now, we don't. We have got the recommended is by the accountants and by the city managers is to have a three-month reserve, which we have, 
but we also have 500,000 plus in our road fund. We have 170,000 plus in our crime prevention fund. So if we had everybody in town not pay their property taxes, 500 homes, which is rare, nobody exceeded the speed limit by 10 limits, so we had no citations, and nobody built anything, we could still get by. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Robertson. The town of Copper Canyon, for every one penny of a ballot, one generates one penny generates twenty five thousand dollars to the general fund budget and add the lower in taxes. That's what one cent generates is twenty five thousand dollars a year. Last year we spent hundred and we we spent four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in legal fees in the last five five and a half six years. Most towns spend twenty five thousand dollars a year. So if you want to, it's about budgeting and it's about not overexpending and not paying hundreds and thousands of dollars in legal fees and reallocate that money to other places if you're not going to get the increase on your ad valorem, on the ad valorem side. Because a city will raise taxes, but they, you forget the county is raising property value. So your town doesn't have to raise taxes to increase revenue because the county's raising the evaluations. So if the town raises the evaluations, you get more money. Thank you. Is there a rebuttal? Would you like one? Yes. Go right ahead. One of the things a lot of people don't realize on our engineering fees and our legal fees is that a large percentage of those are reimbursed by the developer. Uh, when the engineer goes out, say for Toll Brothers, studies their street scheme that makes sure it fits our ordinances, <coughs> does the drainage studies, those are reimbursed by Toll Brothers. The same thing is true when our attorney does all the legal documents you need for this multi-million dollar project. He is also reimbursed. Thank you. So the citizens of Copper Canyon get to choose between a sitting mayor and a former mayor. So tell me, Mr. Robertson, what are some of the major differences between you and your opponent? Actually, Sue and I used to work together on a few occasions whenever we had an opportunity about the, against the water tower, whenever we were going through all of that. You know, uh, I'm just a businessman. I run it like a business. I look at this town as a business. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, I'm a CEO. Uh, I've got a board of directors. Um, you know, uh, it's, we're generating a million dollars a year in revenue and we have to somehow manage that and we have to keep our fleet up or which is in your case, the infrastructure. You know, it's it's just like running a, a small business with a six managers, which is kind of outrageous. You think you could just do that with one or two, but uh, it, that's this my that's my uh, you know approach to this. It's, it's a small business and treat it like a small business. Thank you. Same question, Ms. Tamel. Uh, I think Ron and I disagreed totally on the erecting the elevated water tower for Cross Timbers Water in Bartonville. When that tower was not allowed to be erected, it had the pedestal up and the bowl on the ground. That caused Cross Timbers Water to put a moratorium on fire hydrants. And putting a moratorium on fire hydrants meant anybody building homes that was not close enough to a fire hydrant, they had to sprinkle every home, they had to put in extra retention ponds. This is a huge expense. Toll Brothers is putting in two retention ponds, a deep water well to maintain them at constant level, paying for extra fire equipment, a uh, mile and a half of hose. That's a huge expense for Toll Brothers, and one of the reasons they went to the higher density. Rebuttal. 60 second rebuttal. Go ahead, Mr. Robertson. Cross Timbers Water Supply, failure to supply water to the fire hydrants is a political ploy on their part. TCEQ clearly states that you need one elevated tower for every 2,500 connections. Bartonville Water Supply or Copper Cross Timbers does not have 2,500 connections, plus they have several pump stations. The second elevated tower was illegally built on property that was not properly zoned without a permit to the point that it still sits in the appeals court today. And there's also a, a, another lawsuit that sits in the county over... over uh, contract zoning. Um, so they could charge every fire hydrant they want to 
without a problem. It's just that they're using the towns and development as a, as a tool not to, and to try to get this lawsuit settled. But this lawsuit's deeper than what the mayor is let me think it is. Thank you. All right, let's give him a hand. <laughs> We will uh, now conclude today's forum with closing statements, and we're going to go in opposite order. So each candidate has two minutes for their closing statement, and we will start over there with Mr. Robertson. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. We <coughs> got set the table for you. Copper Canyon has the highest tax rate of a small town in the area today, in this area, up 70% since, since the mayor became mayor. Tamil became mayor. She has passed up two sales tax opportunity. Once in 2007, which I actually came to this chambers and consulted them, and again in 2014. She illegally annexed property because as known today as Copper Creek, which generated a lawsuit to the town and cost thousands of thousands, tens of thousands, and concessions over a long period of time. She went behind the, the council's back and added more lots to the Pole Toll Brothers subdivision. She after illegal agendas are posted, which on a Friday, 72 hours before the meeting is to be held, she changes the agenda. The city council, a council member in this year today, had to denounce the mayor at an open meeting of the council, and they had to vote on an ordinance to harden the ordinance to keep her from being able to do that again. Legal fee reimbursements. $26,000 of over the $436,000 we spent. Engineering reimbursements, $8,000. So they're, they're not as little as you may think. If you want new, if you want a new perspective to the town, you want someone with, with the, with, will manage the town property, you want somebody that will build the bridges, build consensus of the council, that I'm the person you should vote for. If you want status quo, you should vote for Sue. Thank you. Ms. Tamel, two minutes. It's interesting that of our tax rate, the whole town voted for the emergency services district, which is how we got the Argyle Fire District, our fire suppression, and our emergency oh. medical with ambulances. The whole town voted for the road bond which was another 10 cents, but we rebuilt our 25 to 35 year old roads, 90% of them. That was huge. The council has kept faith with you. Copper Canyon is rural, large lots, 42% ag exempt acreage. That's huge. We are financially sound. We have money in the bank for any emergency. <coughs> we have gotten $14 million from the county to rebuild our perimeter roads in concrete, Copper Canyon, Orchid Hill, Chin Chapel. And we've gotten the county funding to make three of our cross railroad crossroads quiet zones. Bartonville, during this time period when Robertson was mayor, did not get anything like that. $14 million is huge because that's our, our town taxpayers are not paying for that. The county funded that for us because they have faith in us. I'm not a quitter. Uh, Ron resigned as mayor in Bartonville in an open council meeting and then ran for council and got less than 30% of the vote. He came over here. He filed for council last year and then pulled out. I'm not a quitter. I'm here for the long term as long as you want me. And I dearly love this town. It's a labor of love to be your mayor. Thank you. Mr. Stransing? When you look at this town, the primary reason people have moved here is to enjoy a world lifestyle. When you look at the action, you're right. Take you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Let me start over. The primary reason people have moved here and have relocated here, and I've talked to a bunch of you because I've gone around and got myself educated on what the opinions really are among the people. And surprisingly, they're very simple. They want to maintain a rural lifestyle. 
But what has really happened in our council and by our mayor is just the opposite. They've approved high-density zoning. They've approved concessions to uh, ordinances. They've changed ordinances. They've given away property taxes and fees to developers as an incentive for them to come here, which is just nonsense. We are in a great location, and we should not be afraid to implement the ordinances that we have on the books, yet they are not being implemented. They're being compromised. That has to stop. When it comes to the meetings, the transparency, it's not there. We simply talk to the council and we get nothing in return. The fact that it matters a couple of times we get an absolute not only no, but hell no. That's not acceptable. Everybody here needs to work together, and right now there is a great divide between the people and the council. That needs to be fixed. If I have your vote... I will help fix that, but we have to reach out to the community and get the community to be involved in a dialogue that helps bridge this gap. We don't have controlled development today. It's uncontrolled. It's got to come back to a very basic obey the ordinances that we have and build accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mangum. I'm Jeff Mangum. I'm seeking re-election as your council member place too. And I will continue to plan and budget to meet the town's essential operating expenses for law enforcement, for town personnel, and also for our professional services. And I'm also working to continue to keep your taxes low. It's been an honor to serve the people of the town of Coppercane who trusted me to be with the job of councilman. And I will promise to continue to earn your trust working to protect our quality of life and green spaces in unique town, small town atmosphere, and continue to be available to the people of the town to serve as your council, your voice on council. And just to correct a few things that was just said, uh, there has been no abatements that we've given any builder here. And as well as that, we've done no height density. There's only been three possible revisions to the master plan from the start since 2004. One was refused, the second one was approved and that went from, we went from two acre to one acre to save 170 acres that was zoned R5. Otherwise that whole 200 acre property was gonna have to be sold. I look forward to, as we go forward, there will be challenges to meet and address in our town surrounded by continual growth which will bring more traffic, roads, and safety issues and challenges to the quality of life we live. And I look forward to working with all the citizens of the town to, to work with that and to, to, um, to meet those challenges and look for solutions that will work for the town. We've done this in the past with the road bond in 2009 with the road task force committee and coming up with the bond election and we can do it again for any future problems. We did a great job in 2004 <coughs> working with the master plan and all the citizen input and I think we can do it again. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Hohenberger. Um, first of all, Copper Canyon is one of, in my mind, uh, the best community around and we've got two of the candidates that made a choice in the last two, two and a half years to move here. So that uh, tells you that we are a good, uh, great community to live in and uh, I'm glad they're being active and I'm looking forward to being more active in the community uh, if you'll vote for me. Uh, my uh, promise is that as far as the master plan, uh, getting that redone, <coughs> getting uh, residents involved. Uh, we've got to do a better job of communicating that to you guys and getting your feedback and, and moving forward, getting past this division that's happened within the community over the Toll Brothers. Uh, you know, it's just sad that we've gotten to this place. 
the other thing is improving, again, communication uh, when things are going on in the community, uh, pulling in uh, involvement uh, away from your daily uh, routines with text messages, town messages, uh, newspapers, and, and we've just got to get better at that because I think the transparency, again, is there. It's on the website. Everything financial is there. Uh, you just have to do a little digging and, and, and think about going there. So um, the other thing is to cut expenses. If we can cut our legal and our uh, consultant fees, engineering fees, then we can control the tax and not have any more uh, increase in taxes. That's the biggest thing. But it's, it's just going to take the community to get there. And I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Davis? Where do you want to live? Do you want to live 12 feet from your neighbor? Or have them looking down into your backyard from 35 or 40 feet in the air? Do you want to live in suburban sprawl? Or do you want to live in Flower Mound? Or do you want to live in Copper Canyon? Do you want exorbitant expenses for things we don't need? Do you want to continually watch the sky and wonder if the next time it rains, your home will flood and your property will wash down Poindexter Creek? Patrick Henry said the liberties of a people never were nor will ever be secure when the transactions of their rulers may be concealed from them. What kind of town government do you want to have? Do you want the status quo or do you want to change? If you want to change in leadership so you can enjoy what you moved here for, then May 4th, vote for me, Robin Douglas Davis, to keep Copper Canyon the place you love. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to all of our candidates today. Thank you to you guys. Let's give them one more round of applause. A reminder that today's forum is being video recorded and can be viewed at our website later on, crosscountrysuzette.com. Early voting begins Monday, April 22nd, ends on Tuesday, April 30th, and on Election Day, May 4th, polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Highland Village Town Hall. And you can visit votedenton.com. Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for reading the Gazette, and uh, have a great weekend.